So today we have a cool geometrical problem. The given data of this question is very simple. There is nothing to be explained in that. But there were some points to be noted and I have mentioned them on this diagram. Now all you have to do is find the ratio of A is to B is to C. So let us see the solution. How can we solve for this? So first of all we will mark the side of the square. So let the side of the square be another variable. Let it be equals to M. Okay. Now we can see that the tangent lines are given so we can utilize the theorem related to the tangent. We have the theorem that from a same common point if there are two tangent to a semicircle or a circle we can say or even we can say a circular arc they are going to have the same length. So here we can observe is that from this point we have two tangent this particular line and this particular line. So they both will have the same length and now we have that this is the side of the square and it is equals to m. So this side equals to m so this is also equals to m. Now here also we can say that from this same common point we have this particular tangent and this particular tangent. So one of them is already having a length that is equals to a. So this remaining one is also going to have the length equals to a. Now as it was been told that this is the center of the circle and this was the point where the tangents were meeting. So here is going to be 90 degree because of the radius and the tangent here. So this all four becomes 90, 90, 90 and 90. Okay. Now as the side of this particular square is equals to m, so the radius of this semicircle is going to be m upon 2. So from this to this it is the radius and it is going to have a length m upon 2. Okay. Now what we can observe is that this complete length is equals to m because it is the side of the square. This much part is equals to a. So this remaining length is going to be the longer minus the shorter. Longer is m, shorter is a. So it's going to be have a length m minus a. And this is already the side of the square and that is equals to m. Here's the 90 degree because it is the corner of the square. So what we can observe is that we have a right angle triangle let it be equals to here. So what we have is a right angle triangle like this way. Yes, this is the 90 degree. This side is m minus a. The hypotenuse is m plus a and this side is equals to m. So now if I will apply the Pythagoras theorem. So m plus a the whole square is equals to m square plus m minus a the whole square. So we have that m square plus a square plus 2 times a m is equals to m square plus m square plus a square minus 2 times a m. This and this open with the simple algebraic identity. Now here we can see that some terms are going to be cancelled m square a square m square a square. So we have 4 times a m is equals to m square. So we obtain the value of m that is equals to 4 times a. Okay, so we have excluded one of the variable that is m. So m is equals to 4 times a. So here if I will put the value of m that is 4 times a. So we'll obtain that here it becomes m minus a. Now it becomes 3 times a. And 3 times a ultimately represent c plus b. So we have that 3 times a is equals to b plus c. Okay. Okay, this is the second equation we have obtained. This is the first one and here we have the second one. Now I am just zooming into the diagram. If I am joining a line from this point to this point, what special can you observe now? We can just have a look that this triangle and this triangle are going to be congruent because of the right angle hypotenuse property. Here's the 90 degree, here's the 90 degree. They have the same common hypotenuse and they have the same equal side length. So these two triangles become congruent because of the right angle hypotenuse inside. So ultimately this side is equals to this side. So that side is already named as C. So this particular also becomes C. Now here this particular triangle. This particular is a right angle triangle. And it has the side that is the height we can say is equals to C. Base is A. Hypotenuse is equals to B. So by applying the Pythagoras theorem we obtain that A square plus C square is equals to B square. From here we have the value of B that is 3 times A minus C. Now we will put this particular value of B over there. So we will obtain that a square plus c square is equals to b square. b is having this value so I have to square this particular value that is 3 times a minus c the whole square. And that will give me 9 times a square plus c square minus 6 times a c. c square c square got cancelled out. I obtain 6 times a c is 8 a square. a square and a got cancelled out so it gives me the value that c is equals to 4 times a upon 3. So we have the value of c that is 4 times a upon 3. b plus c or we can say. 3 times a is equals to b plus c. So now 3 times a becomes b plus value of c is 4a upon 3. So we have the value of b that is equals to 5a upon 3. Okay. Now what we have to find is the ratio of a is to b is to c. Sorry not 3 it says to be c. Okay. So we have to find this particular ratio a is to b is to c. So we have the value of a that is a itself. We have the value of b that is 5 times a upon 3. We have the value of c that is 4 times a upon 3. 
so it's like only a what if i will just multiply 3 and divide 3 in this particular term so multiplying 3 and dividing 3 now we can see that from this 3 a upon 3 a upon 3 and a upon 3 got cancelled out so we obtain the ratio of a is to b is to c as 3 is to 5 is to 4 and that's the answer that the ratio of this three particular line segments are going to be 3 is to 5 is to 4 so this was my method to solve this particular question if you have any other method other than this you can do comment below and if you don't like to comment you can email or you can dm me on my instagram the links are in the description